So one really fun application of the derivative is this idea of particle motion, a particle moving along a line, okay? So if we think about this particle like a dot sliding along a horizontal line, we're talking about it can move right, it can move left, it can speed up, it can slow down, it can accelerate, it can have a positive velocity, a negative velocity. Really, we're not going to do anything new, but we're going to apply what we already know to this idea of a particle moving along a horizontal line. Now I have his function for position, s of t equals the following equation, where s is measured in meters and t is in seconds. So the first thing it asks me to do is to find the velocity of my particle. Well, you need to know that velocity is the derivative of the position function. And derivatives are something we easily know how to find. So I'm going to take my derivative, which is why this is lumped into the section of applications of derivatives. So then the next thing says we want to find this velocity at one second. So easily enough, let's plug in one. And when we plug in one, we find that the speed, or velocity in this case, of my particle is negative four meters per second at time one second. Now the next thing I can do with the derivative is I can actually find where my particle is at rest, moving left, or moving right. Well, here's what we need to know in order to answer this question. You need to know that if it's going to be at rest, we're talking about the velocity being zero. If we're moving left, we're talking about the velocity being negative. And if it's right, we're talking about the velocity being positive. So in other words, I'm going to do a sign chart for my derivative. I'm going to set my derivative equal to 0. And I'm going to factor out a 2. and factor this into 3t minus 1 and t minus 2, giving me the following critical points. t equals 1 third and t equals 2. Now just like we did in our first derivative test, I'm going to take these and put them on a velocity sign chart. Except instead of having arrows that extend in either direction, my velocity sign chart will start at zero because we're talking about time. And I'm going to put one third and two, and I'm going to find where it is positive and negative. So now plugging into my derivative, I want you to go ahead and press pause, find all the places where the velocity is positive and negative. Okay? Hopefully you have found that it's going to be positive, negative, positive in that order. So what does that tell me? That means that my particle, when it has a positive velocity, is moving to the right. My particle then moves to the left and then moves right again. So positive velocity moving in the positive direction. The next thing it asks me to do is to find the acceleration at time t equals one second. So you need to know that acceleration is the derivative of the velocity or the second derivative of my position function. So take the derivative again, and I'm going to get 12t minus 14. And if I want to evaluate that at 1, then I simply am going to plug in 1 everywhere I have a t. And I can easily find that my acceleration is negative 2 meters per second squared. Acceleration is always measured in meters per second squared. Um, I realize that we never actually summarized this up here. We never said the actual intervals where it's moving right and left. So just to kind of jump backwards for a second, um, it was moving to the right from 0 to 1 third and from 2 to infinity. And it was moving to the left from one third to two, and it was at rest at t equals one third and two. Okay? 
Now the next question is probably one of my favorite questions and it asks for the displacement of the particle. The displacement of the particle between a time interval. You need to know what displacement is. So I want you to write the words displacement is the total net change in location. And the way that I would explain that is, let's say I leave my house. I leave my house, I drive to Vista Ridge. I leave Vista Ridge, I go to Target. I leave Target and go to Torchies. At my final resting place, Torchies, what is my displacement from my house to Torchies? I don't want to know the distance in between. I want to know how far have I moved overall from my house to Torchies, okay? So I want to know what is the net change in my location, my displacement. And that's easy to find because if I can find my position at time zero and my position at time three, I can just look for the difference in between them. So if I plug in zero into my original position function, I should get five. And if I plug in zero into my original, excuse me, three into my original position function, I should get eight. Well, the difference between them means that my displacement is three meters overall. Even though this particle moves left and right Overall, from 0 to 3, I've only changed a distance of 3 meters. But what if I want to know the distance traveled overall for every single moment between t equals 0 and 3? To illustrate this, it's important to understand what my particle's doing. It starts out at time 0, and it's going to go right until it gets to t equals 1 third seconds. And then it's going to go left again all the way to t equals 2 seconds. And then it's going to go right again all the way to t equals 3 seconds. So my particle changes direction. I want to know what is this overall distance that it has traveled total, total distance. So in order to find this, I have to consider every place that it has changed, it's changed directions. So I need to find S of 0, S of 1 third because it changed directions there, S of 2, and S of 3. Well, from my previous problem, I know that this is 5 and this is 8. I want you to press pause and plug in 1 third and 2 into the position function. So I found that S of 1 third was 5.63 and S of 2 was 1. So now I've got all the positions. I want to know what is the overall distance. So my particle starts out and he travels all the way to 5.63 meters, which means he gains 0.63 meters. Then he travels some more and goes all the way 2 seconds till he gets to 1 meter. So he's going to move backwards and he loses... 4.63 meters. And then I'm going to travel some more and go back in the right direction, and I'm going to gain positive 7. But when we talk about this overall distance, I don't care about positive or negative. I just want to know total distance traveled. So if I add all those up, I should find that my particle travels 12.26 meters overall. It was only displaced three, but total distance travels 12.26 meters. Now, probably my favorite question that you could be asked about this kind of particle motion stuff has to do with speeding up and slowing down. And this is really the hardest component of the day. So before we do that, let's kind of dump what it is we know. We know that our velocity function, V of t, equals zero at t equals one third and t equals two. And I can draw that velocity sign chart
And I can also fill in the positive, negative, positive that we found in part B, okay? The next thing I know is that the acceleration function was 12t minus 14. We never made an acceleration sign chart, but let's go ahead and set this second derivative equal to zero and find where what we would might call it a point of inflection, but in this case, it's gonna be where our acceleration changes from positive to negative. And we should get that t is equal to 7 6 And again, I'm gonna make an acceleration sign chart and put 7 6 right here. And I wanna know where is acceleration positive and negative? Where is acceleration positive and negative? I want you to press pause and find where acceleration is positive and negative. Hopefully you're pressing play now and have found that acceleration is negative over here and positive over here. So now let's answer this question. It wants to know when is my particle speeding up and slowing down? I want you to put a star next to this, highlight it, whatever you need to do to draw attention to it. But definition, since speed is the absolute value of the velocity, I know that a particle is speeding up when velocity and acceleration have the same sign, either both positive or both negative. It's going to be slowing down when the velocity and acceleration have opposite signs, one positive and one negative. So now that I have these stacked on top of each other, I can segment them into their pieces. Okay? So I can draw a line through here and through here. And I can start to now see everywhere where my velocity and my acceleration have the same sign. So in order for something to be speeding up, it has to have the same sign, same velocity and acceleration. Let me grab my highlighter. Here, the velocity is negative and my acceleration is negative. Here, my velocity is positive and my acceleration is positive. So I can now say that my particle is speeding up from one third to seven sixths and from two to infinity. And I now need to know where is my particle slowing down, and that's going to be everywhere else, everywhere where my signs do not match. So here, velocity is positive, acceleration is negative, and here, velocity is negative, acceleration is positive. So those are the places where my particle is going to be slowing down from zero to one third, and from seven six to two. And we're going to talk more about this idea of uh, particle motion in class tomorrow. So I hope you guys have a great night.